give me a black female protagonist wielding a sword while navigating love and war in the era of William Shakespeare with Orisha, magic, and fae. There is no question of to read or not to read, for to read is the answer. Are you ready? The Books and Vogue Podcast. Come get your favorite next book. The Books and Vogue Podcast. Welcome, book lovers, to the Books and Vogue Podcast. This is your premier listening experience all about immersive reading and helping avid and reluctant readers alike imagine book characters like never before. I'm your host, Kat Trinidad. The format of the show is I introduce a book, share tips on how you can engage your senses as you read this title, because it's one thing to be a mood reader, but you get a little something extra from the story when you are set the mood reader. And finally, I will end the show with a reimagining of my favorite scene. today. We will discuss techniques for getting into that self-same metal with none other than the author, Brittany N. Williams. Welcome, Brittany. Hi, Kat. Thank you for having me. Please tell us about the book. Yes. So That Self-Same Metal is the first book in the Forge and Fracture Saga trilogy. It follows 16-year-old Joan Sands. She has the magical ability to manipulate metal. And she only wants to use those powers to build swords and choreograph fights for William Shakespeare's acting company. But when malevolent Faye invade London, she finds she's one of the few people who can keep the city safe. Joan and her family are a part of a tradition and a community within London who worship the Orisha and are thus given powers by their Orisha. So Joan is a child of the Orisha Ogun, and he gives her the ability to control metal, and to make iron weapons, which, if you know anything about the Fae, makes her particularly effective against the Fae. Um, and Joan also is trying to figure out if she is more interested in the handsome acting apprentice who she's known for most of her life, or this mysterious new girl who's beautiful and somehow seems more connected to the conflict than any of them realize. So, so that is book one, that self same metal. Thank you so much for that, Brittany. Do you care to to join me in a discussion on some tips for setting a reading mood? Oh, absolutely. Let's set this mood. <laughs> okay. Well, book lovers, I hope you have your writing utensils ready because class is in session. Hear it, see it, smell it, sense it, taste it, touch it. Oh. Hear it, see it, smell it, sense it, taste it, touch it. Oh. The Books and Vogue Podcast. So, Brittany, what's the vibe? How can we engage our spirit as we read this book? Okay, so the vibe is that, like, if you think about the days right after Halloween and how, like, things still feel spooky, but it's not that. Um, absolute nexus of the supernatural that Halloween itself is. It's that vibe, um, the vibe of like, it's cold outside, but I'm nice and warm inside and I'm safe inside, maybe. So like that, that is the the vibe I want to, uh, that we should set as you're reading this book. I like that. I especially like that maybe. <laughs> right? <laughs> like mostly, you're good mostly. <laughs> So, so what's the sound of that self-same metal? What key notes and music or nature to set the tone as we read this novel? Yeah, so if you want just like a natural sound, definitely the sound of like crackling wood in a fire is good to have. Um, but for music, you got to find bard core. So it's a genre of like covers of contemporary songs that sound like something you would hear at like the Renaissance Festival or um, like it just has a medieval twist to it. So that's really great. And if you just want to listen to something that is like a soundtrack, the soundtrack from the movie Ready or Not is really good. And it just, it matches the vibe of the book for real. So those are your options. 
I like that. I like that. I'm going to have to reread <laughs> with those <laughs> notes. <laughs> right. Because I was just doing instrumentals like of that era. I didn't know there were covers out there. Yeah. That sounds, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so do share the aesthetics. Um, this can be any visuals aside from the book. Yeah. So definitely um, the flickering of candlelight. Uh, you want, um, it's a good book to read either at twilight. So right when the sun is almost all the way set, um, it's especially good to read overnight. So like it's a good middle of the night read. Um, also just like uh, when you think of um, just cozy fabrics and stuff around you, uh, if you, um, I, I just think uh, I've had quite a few people say that they've read it overnight and that it really put them like in the space spot where they needed to be and it's a it's just a, it's a really good nighttime read if there are a couple creepy spots and creepy things that that are just way more effective in dim light and everything and it's not a like bright overhead light kind of book it's a moody golden tinge lamp light kind of that's the kind of read that you want so the yellow light no white light yellow light we go good with yellow light I like that. It's definitely giving lack of electricity vibes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we're going to save our eyes and not try to read it by candlelight. We're just going to save our eyes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what's the flavor? Any food or drink companions for this book? Yeah. So I looked up some like 17, early 17th century recipes. And so what I came away with was shortbread cookies. Go for some good shortbread cookies. So you get those. And then um, this is pre-tea time. So the English hadn't colonized enough to get tea yet. So instead of tea, what you're going to do is if you are underage, get yourself some mulled cider. And if you are of age to drink, get yourself a nice mug of mulled wine. So you want like those cinnamon notes and the star anise and the clove smell and like all of that to just kind of like waft up as you take a drink. The drink's going to warm you all the way through and it's just and it feels decadent too it just feels nice and decadent and uh wonderful and it puts you in the mind of like like winter and that whole like cold outside but I'm warm inside feel so that's what you want to go for so so when me be a good pick that's like my favorite type of one yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> um so what is the aroma are there any smells to transport us into the pages Yes, absolutely. So you want to get a candle or some kind like a candle that has wood smoke layers to it, or even better, if you have a working fireplace, light that bad boy up. If you have a fire pit outside, light that up um, and just go for it as you read. Uh, I'll also say um, roses, like the smell of rose, uh, the smell of lavender. um, And uh, as far as incense, I love sandalwood incense. And it always makes me think of like the Orisha and Orisha type things. So if you want to go for an incense, go for some sandalwood incense. That's, I think that'll get you in the right mood. And then also just an extra visual of the smoke just wafting through the air. It really feels like you're in the middle of some kind of magical ritual. So that, yeah, bonus, (laughs) bonus sight. (laughs) I love that. I love that. (laughs) So how can we get more of the feels? So wool at this time in England's history was a very important um, textile. So if you have a thick wool blanket, a nice wool sweater that's really fluffy, wool socks, um, or any kind of like fluffy, cozy blanket you can wrap yourself in, um, surround yourself with fluffy pillows. Like you just want to feel as comfortable and like cozy as you possibly can. I know it's hard right now because it's really hot this summer. Like it's, we've been hitting a hundred plus down here. So, you know, the thought of just sitting in wrapped up in wool is a little like, but trust me, trust me, it'll get you, it'll get you good. If you got to go like lighter and cotton right now, do it. But you just want to be blankets and pillows and just wrapped up with your candle lit and just with your wood smoke going and your little incense and you is that's that's it you'll feel perfectly in the mood your mulled cider or mulled wine that'll do it you know um my husband likes to blast the air conditioner and I'm <laughs> always cold so like 
that's one way to get around there. If the air conditioner is blasting, you warm up, you get snuggy in a blanket, right? And continue your reading. Mm -hmm. Or in a, listen, if you got a snuggie that you love, like that's it. Slip on into that bad boy. You will be, that's it. You'll be set. Okay. Okay. Well, there you go, book lovers. These are your recommended supplies as you read this title. If you're able, pause and get some of these if available or simply imagine because it's time for my favorite scene. Disclaimer, please note the exact words, names, locations, and or scenarios mentioned in this reimagined reenactment may differ from the actual book. Sharing my favorite scenes, I reenacted those. Imagining the fiction world that I've been reading of. Going from all the things, I just gave you a list. Come experience all the senses as protagonists. And it don't get more real than this. Immerse and read with books on both and live vicariously. The show must go on. Starring Brittany N. Williams as Joan Sands, Jane Sands, and guard number two. And Kat Trinidad as Nick Tooley, Master Augustine Phillips, Roz, and guard number one. Where did he go? Uh, it's so difficult to see anything in this dim candlelight. Joan, we haven't much time. We must do our ritual for good luck. What are you doing here on the stairs? You miss your cue. Can't break tradition. Hurry, and I won't be late. Joan, for luck, hurry. For luck. Good show, Nick. Thanks. Gotta go. My hands are still tingling where he touched me. We've done the same thing before every show over the last three years that I've worked with the company. When did such a tiny thing start feeling so important? <sighs> I hate how easily he can distract me. I think I hear them. Stand hold. Who is there? Oh, that's an cue to enter as Horatio. He joins the Royal Guard to await the appearance of a certain ghost currently in need of a certain tin crown held safely in my satchel. Wait, Nick throws the curtain aside when he enters. I have to clear out of the way before the audience sees me. Joan! And here's my brother sprinting toward me in his queenly gown, with Roz trailing behind him struggling to lace his bodice. Hold still, James. Where have you been? They're already doing the opening scene. Master Phillips is about to go on as the King's ghost. Stop wiggling before I tie those laces too tightly. Oh, hello, Joan. I suppose since he doesn't have to enter as Hamlet's mother until the next scene, he has plenty of time to berate me, even though he forgot to bring the crown along this morning. Is she here yet? Oh, Master Phillips must be impatient if he's shouting like this backstage. Right here! Your crown's just in my satchel. Let me retrieve it. Shite! It's bent and dented from when I fell earlier. I should have reinforced the tin, but Master Phillips can't wear that. It's nearly flat. I know he can't. Just give me a moment and don't let anyone see. Tuss, tuss. Twill not appear. It's nearly Phillips' cue. No time to waste. All right, crown. Straighten out now. That's it. That's it. Ah, a perfect circle. I'll take that. Thank you. James, I'm not done lacing you yet. Enjoy the show, Joan. My crown! Finally! <laughs> Was I fast enough? If the action stops, Oh no, I was too late. Peace! Break thee off! Look where it comes again! And the same figure, like the king, that's dead. <gasps> that's a relief. Right now, Master Phillips is making his way across the balcony in robes of eerie white, a stark silver crown atop his head, just as he's supposed to. 
It's a sight to behold when it's done right. And by the hush throughout the theater, I know it has been. Book lovers, if you have enjoyed this sneak peek, you can get more by reading the whole book. That self same metal is available at your local library and everywhere books are sold. And if it's not, request it because you deserve to read all the books that interest you. And if you've already read That self same metal or are in the middle of reading it, let me know in the comments what you like to do to set the mood for reading because I'd love to hear from you. So please leave your feedback. Brittany, is there anything else you would like to share with the listeners? Yes. So if you enjoyed or find yourself enjoying that self-same metal, the sequel slash book two in the Forge and Fracture saga, Saint Seducing Gold, will be out next April. So keep your eyes peeled for the cover and for all kinds of book news coming up. So yeah, and you can follow more of Joan's adventures in the future. Wow. <laughs> Again, thank you, Brittany, for joining us today. Yes, thank you so much for having me. This was so fun and good to think about. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you, book lovers, for listening. With peace, love, and joy. Happy reading. The Books and Vogue Podcast. Come get your favorite next book. The Books and Folk Podcast with Catch and Brad. Subscribe, listen, check out recommendations, and happy reading. <laughs>